What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Profiling Passionate People. I am your host, Solomon Ledvinka. And today, as you can kind of see, I, my Tom Brady jersey don't fit anymore. My Teddy Bruschi jersey don't fit anymore. So if you guys can kind of see what's going on here, we're going to be talking about them Patriots. And a person that I've known for a very long time, a diehard Patriots fan, I'm going to go ahead and bring him in here now, Mr. Brandon Pesolano. There you are, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, Solomon. Thanks for having me on. It's been quite a few years now, but I'm glad we've uh, conti continued to communicate to, and given me this opportunity to come on and uh, get, shed some light on my team here. <laughs> Absolutely. And like I said, I was just going down the list of all 32 teams and I was like, okay, I can, I can pinpoint, you know, the Titans with this person, the Niners with this person, but the Patriots, I was just like, hold on, Brandon. And, <laughs> and here we are right now. So I see that we got the hat on with the, with the Patriot. We got the shirts right there. So no Jersey for me. They're all, all of them are outdated. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I tried putting on one of my jerseys not too long ago and it just it shrunk too tight. And for me to try to like move during the podcast, it just, it wasn't going to work. So, all right. So we are going into year two post Tom Brady. I mean, you can't mention the Patriots without Tom yeah. Brady, but I want to know how did you become a Patriots fan? Funny story. So actually growing up my younger years, I was, into the Niners kind of my brother kind of got me into sports growing up uh and then around at the age of seven uh I got to watch that Super Bowl against the uh between the Packers and Patriots unfortunately the Patriots came up short and that was kind of like the first year I started comprehending things myself things of that nature yeah. kind of just growing up and I was like you know what I, I'm gonna our family's from Boston so I'm gonna go back and start supporting all uh, the bloodline there, there so that's kind of how everything got kick-started um fortunately for most of the time I've been rooting for them there hasn't been a lot of losing uh yeah. on all aspects not just the Patriots but in all Boston sports whether it's the Bruins the Red Sox and the Celtics they've all won at least one title so I've been very fortunate I get very passionate when I watch football and all sports uh, it's not good when our team, my team's losing, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what's what, uh, after last year is kind of a, I don't want to say a culture shock because it wasn't a shock that that was going to happen, but definitely a change in that team dynamic up there in New England. So it'll be interesting uh, to see what year two brings with Cam Newton under center, continuing yeah. his trek there, uh, bringing in Mac Jones from Bama. Uh, I was actually hoping we were going to be able to draft him, and we did. So I'm kind of excited to what he can develop, especially with that uh, Belichick Saban connection that that they always talk about. Yeah, I mean, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, Brandon and I we used to work over at ESPN out in Anaheim, and we were both production assistants. I followed and mirrored your career with that, and anytime that I would come into my shift, I would always check to see the computer of who I was working with. And yep, you had all your Boston sports, you had Patriots, you had the Bruins, you had the Red Sox. So um, I know, like I said, when I needed somebody to talk about their Patriots, I knew who to reach out to. <laughs> now, I remember you mentioning that you were from Boston, actually Boston proper or whereabouts in, in Boston? So I'm actually not from Boston. Uh, oh, okay. Every one of my immediate family members was either born or grew up there. Okay. Uh, starting with my dad. My dad was born and raised there. Uh, my mom was born in California, but grew up in Boston. Oh. And my brother was born in Boston, but grew up in California. Okay. And I'm the only one that was born and raised in Southern California. So, uh, but for the most part, uh, we got family all over, whether it's uh, my dad's from East Boston. So we got that tied Revere. Uh, we got family in Winthrop. So they're all around. Very cool. Okay. So, you mentioned the guy, and I, I love how everyone has their insight on Mac Jones. So you bring in Mac Jones. Mac spelled three letters, just like Tom Brady, T-O-M. <laughs> Jones, J-O-N-E-S, B-R-A-D-Y. <laughs> they both wore number 10 in college, but 
you know, obviously um, Belichick has already said, you know, going into this upcoming season, um, we're going to rock it out with Cam Newton just to see how everything goes. But from what I've seen through practice, Mac Jones is as good as he's looked in college, maybe even better. So your prediction, this is your team, your moment. When do you think we'll start seeing Mac Jones under center other than obviously preseason? First off, I want to say uh, the only difference there is Mac Jones ain't getting the one, two in New England. I can tell you that because <laughs> that's got to be retired. Uh, that needs to be retired. <laughs> basically Definitely. The day Tommy boy retires. But uh, I don't know. I, I really want to have I had high hopes for Cam going into last season, to be quite honest with you. I was like, all right, he's always been hot. It's been spotty, but he, he can he can get the job done. Yeah. And then as the season progressed, it was well, what it's not kind of shaping up the way obviously you, they wanted it to go. And as a fan, I'm kind of thinking like going into every game thinking, right, we're probably gonna not come out on top on this one, but mm-hmm. always in the back of my mind that positivity like they got to get it done. Um, personally, I think it all kind of depends on how Cam Newton pl- plays in the first few weeks. I, I, I would, it's gonna be a lot different going into the season now playing what is it 17 games rather than 16 yeah. so yeah. you add that extra game in there that's gonna play I think a tremendous factor I know it's only one game but that plays a tremendous factor in football yeah, um, definitely uh, the first I mean now you're only down to three preseason games so you got one less game to kind of see how guys are gonna shape up uh, and also do you keep Jared Stenham on the right re- on, on the roster as well that's a good question. I I wanted Jared Sidham last year to play the entire season, to be completely honest with you. Uh, and then Cam Newton, obviously the household name in the NFL, coming out of Auburn on the, on the championships and things like that. Um, I wanted Stidham to get the experience and kind of put in that time get and see where it led. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and Belichick and the rest of the uh, coaching staff didn't see that way either. But uh, – I, it's kind. It's hard because Hoyer's been in that system for so long, so much of his career as well. And so, Hoyer, yeah. And we know Bill, Belichick don't carry more than two quarterbacks hardly ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very rare that he even has a third. So I, I think more than likely the way from judging from what I saw last season, I think Stidham may go down to that roster squad, that roster spot the or the practice, practice squad, squad yeah. practice squad i'm sorry and you keep hoyer up there kind of give him be a mentor to mac jones um like you mentioned mac jones and all, all the otas and stuff has been pretty damn good to be quite honest with you <laughs> he's looked a little bit better to cam, than cam newton in my opinion but uh that and that linebacker number that he's been rocking on that jersey too number, so. number 50 you got to earn your number when you come in trying to take over yeah. that position yeah that, that's not Ninkovich out there that, that's Mac Jones it is not so uh I would say maybe three to four weeks of cam kind of see what he has yeah uh depending on Mac Jones's development through those first five weeks maybe go to him if Newton's not getting it done um I mean Hoy. Oh, I, 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 I'm not going to say that Hoyer is going to get a whole lot of playing time unless some, somebody gets hurt, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's that, that definitely, definitely that mentor that uh, those two young guys are going to need within Stidham and Jones. Yeah, and should all three of them go down? I mean, Matt Castle still has not officially retired from the NFL, so, I mean, (laughs) there's always him that they can always go after. But you look at last season, and, yes, you guys went 7-9, and third in the AFC East. I believe you guys were 2-0 and going into that Seattle game. I believe it was, like, week three and came up just short going 2-1. and The team had so much poise, and everyone was looking at – wow, these Patriots can really win behind Cam Newton. And, you know, injuries happen. I remember um, Cam had tested positive for COVID. Mm -hmm. And, you know, next thing you know, just, you know, I don't like rubbing salt in anybody's wound, but, you know, the losses started piling up and the, the, the injuries and everything. I mean, that comes with an NFL season. So now that we do turn the page this upcoming season, you guys 
have a 17 game season as does everybody realistically I know that you would want the team to go 17 and 0 but you start off the first two weeks at least in the division you guys are at home against the Dolphins and then on the road a couple miles away down there with the Jets so um, you know adding the key pieces that you did over this offseason adding Mac Jones should he be under center week one stole my guy John New Smith but the, the roster, you bring in Nelson Aguilar, um, I believe it's Jacoby Myers, who nobody thought was going to see, you know, blossom into the great wide receiver that he has potential to be. Mm-hmm. And then that defense just got absolutely an up- upgrade with Matthew Judon. So um, how do you see week one going against uh, those stingy Dolphins right now with Tua? <sighs> Those stingy dolphins. That's exactly correct. That's they're always those divisional games are never easy. And whenever we go to Miami, that's that's the worst. Even Tommy had problem problems down there. Um, it's it's definitely going to be a dogfight. It always is between those two teams, whether it's at home or on the road. Um, Tua love watching that kid in in college. That he's got a lot of potential. Unfortunately, he suffered that hip injury that he had to have surgery on. So yeah, um, I definitely see a a positive light in his future uh, being down there in Miami. Uh, I think it'll be very interesting going down there in Miami. Uh, as we've been talking about, we hit, we got Cam under center. Who knows if that's even going to stick through week one? I mean, we don't know. I, we, yeah. Like you said, injuries, the injury bug can hit. Um, we're not even done with the pandemic yet, apparently. So, and yeah. that's something that we've never experienced before. Well, at least in my lifetime. So, to where it's stopped the sports world. Uh, Absolutely. And just like injuries, not everyone's going to get hit by it as much as other teams, but yet here we, there we were last year. Um, I I think we should fare pretty well. I'm going to say I'm a very, when it comes to in life, I'm a very half glass full kind of person. When it comes to my sports teams, I'm a definitely a, uh, half glass empty kind of person let's just be I'll, I'll be completely honest with you yeah. um, I always go in expecting the worst when it comes to sports just because I'm a sports guy I, I never know like you always have that hope but of course if you lose hopefully it's not as bad although it always ends up tend to be worse <laughs> but yeah. um, definitely I, I do have some positive vibes going into the season uh, unfortunately as we heard last week and kill Harry's wants wants out for whatever reason uh that's a whole nother thing yeah <laughs> uh, we did pick up a couple wide receivers uh from the raiders the in some trades and everything we got nelson aguilar which will be uh definitely uh i've always had him on my fantasy teams to be completely honest with you he's kind of a nice little chunky yards guy we also got kendrick Bourne coming in so yeah. we got a couple guys uh that are able to replace uh And, I mean, we've seen Nelson Aguilar out here in SC. So, I mean, we know what he's capable of, and especially in that open field and a couple of deep balls last year from Derek Carr. It definitely made Nelson Aguilar the one of the premier target receivers for people to sign. And so, you know, whoever's under center, they have themselves a versatile weapon, you know, opposite Jacoby Myers. Again, Nikhil Henry, I mean, who? I mean, he, he hasn't done anything to be this dramatic to be want to re, be released already. Exactly. So, um, like you said, you know, you got a lot of hype going into the season. Earlier in the podcast, you had mentioned, you know, not used to losing as much. Again, we're, we're one year away or one year removed from the Tom Brady era. So I know you got week four circled, as does all of America. <laughs> The go Tom Brady returns back home to New England. I'm sure you will be tuned for that one. Um, you know, what are, what are your thoughts about that game as, as he returns home? Definitely going to be one for the ages. Uh, yeah. It's almost as big as Peyton going back to Indianapolis. Yeah. When he was with Denver. Uh, I'm excited to see kind of what the defense can do against him because I mean, yeah, we have some new faces. We've lost some faces on our on the defensive side of the ball as well since Tommy's been uh, left last year. 
Um, but now it's the de- the d- defense's turn to kind of get revenge on him. That they, they haven't been able to hit him in practice. They haven't been able to do all that. So now they can tee off. <laughs> um, but that whole situation to me is it's a it's a little sticky situation. I mean, obviously we appreciate and uh, the twenty years of service that he gave us, the six titles that he brought to New England, is great times. A lot of a lot of ups. Uh, yeah, I've always been one to praise guys who were loyal that don't chase the money and i know brady has never been one to chase the money but yeah uh loyalty for me in sports is a big factor i miss the larry bird magic johnson days they did whatever they wanted to stay in la and boss to their teams yeah uh, even with kobe kobe never wanted to leave now i mean yeah rest in peace god bless his soul yeah um but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I was a little sour when he just, when he left. So, and it was the same for me with Gronk coming out of retirement to join him. I know they're best buds and I'm glad that they, they did what they did, but as a Patriots fan, I was a little, <laughs> a little heartbreaking. And those are like really the only two, two jerseys I have, uh, out of the box right now for moving, but it's yeah. Brady and Gronk. But, um, I hope we, we could, we could best them. In, in that game, I'll be on. I'll be completely honest with you. I would love to blow them out. I would love to beat them forty-eight nothing. I don't. Oh, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I was trying right. to compare a similar story of, of uh, a person who was very loyal to the Titans, and when they came back after going to a new team, first thought in my head it was okay. Yeah, I was sad when I saw Vince Young go to the Eagles, and he came back and and played against them, but. Nothing hurt me more, and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it, was seeing Steve Air McNair go into the Ravens, Mm -hmm. coming back to Nashville, and then beating us in the playoffs. So, I mean, it was a bunch of mixed emotions for sure. I I love what he did for the rest of his career. He'll forever be Air McNair in a Titans uniform, but, you know, just uh, seeing him in a different jersey or even Eddie George, his short time with the Dallas Cowboys before he he retired. Um, You know, Tom Brady is just the absolute amazing best player that I've ever come across. Um, he's also born and raised from San Mateo, so yes, I'm looking for that. But so you guys will be playing the a- NFC South this upcoming season. Obviously, two games each against the the Bills, the, the the Dolphins, and the Jets. You look at your schedule. Of course, we want to be as optimistic as possible. Seventeen and zero. I'm sure you would want your team to go, and you know, eventually that twenty and zero, maybe one day. But you look at the schedule. Honest opinion, first off, how do you see you guys going to do in the AFC East, let alone uh, overall record? So what what you thinking? So no, as a as a, as a uh, very passionate Pats fan, uh, normally I go into the season when Tommy was around thinking we'll go like 10 and 6, 12 and 4 kind of thing. Yeah. Um, last year, I was hoping we'd get to 500 minimum. Obviously didn't happen. We finished the season 7 and 9. Um, I don't know. Let's, I'm, I'm kind of like scrolling as we, as we talk about it. I mean, you got some good, uh, let's see here. You got some good circle games that you can be looking at. Obviously you guys got us this year. Um, the new Colts. The Saints game will be interesting as well, just because Drew Brees is no longer in New Orleans after his retirement. So that could be a game that we could grab from them. It is up in New England, up at home. So that's a, that's a plus there. Can't sleep um, on the Chargers either. It Chargers are coming to their own. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, that's honestly. definitely a team that I would be more worried about, especially in the coming. Uh, and you look all. Year. Yeah, and you look also um, big circle circle matchup Cowboys and the Patriots as well. So. Dak under that new contract and honestly I mean you think about you mentioned that Cowboys game sir I'm actually going to be in Boston when they're there I'm not going to be able to go to the game because my cousin married that at four o'clock and the game's at 425 I told her I'd meet her at the reception there there you go Uh, you'll be there in spirit (laughs) I uh, I, I would and I and as passionate as I am, and I'm going to be completely honest, and I'll probably take a lot of heat for this. I've never actually seen the Patriots play in person. I, I was supposed to go last year, obviously, then the pandemic hit. Um, 
hoping to go this year. Couldn't get, obviously, I got the wedding to go to. So it's been a little bit rough. I've never actually had the chance to go see them. Wow. Uh, but hopefully within these coming years, get a little bit of a different vibe. Uh, I know I'm a terrible fan. I've never seen them, but I make up for it. I saw my Red Sox hoist a, tr- a trophy in L.A. in 18. So, <laughs> yeah, I was there for that game, and I really don't want to get into the details of what happened prior to that. <laughs> you know, it just, yeah, it was just not a good day. Football, but <laughs> yeah, let, let's just stick to the football. But I mean, same thing with me. Um, I've seen several uh, Titans games outside of Nashville during the pandemic, I was able to grab an $80 round trip ticket to Nashville. I got to see the stadium, still haven't seen them in at home, but um, they'll be coming out here against the Rams. So I'm hoping to uh, catch that game, but yeah, I mean, now, now that I know that I really want you to catch a, a game in person, <laughs> that's, especially that's, for your that's Patriots. The goal, my friend, that's the goal. Um, looking at the schedule, I'd say in the first three games, just to start, just to throw a, a little chunk out there, yeah, probably going to drop to Miami in the, in, in the season opener. Uh, that's just being real. Well, I'll give us the win because that's at home. Okay. Uh, going down week two against the, uh, up in new Meadowlands against the jets. We actually may drop that game to be completely honest with you. I mean, the jets got. Uh, Zach Wilson coming in, uh, backing up, probably backing up Darnold now. I, I don't know if Flacco's still around up there. Uh, no, uh, Darnold's down in uh, uh, down oh, in Carolina. That's right. I'm sorry. I do apologize. I forgot You're to get good. down there. Um, yeah. So Zach Wilson could come in. He's he doesn't have that bad of a crew up there. No, uh, they just picked up Corey Davis too. So we so, have a good one over there. Um, I'll give us a win in Week Three against the Saints. That puts us at uh, two and one. Yeah. As much as I want to say we'll win in week four, I think Brady, Brady's just – he's on a whole nother level than the rest of the NFL. I'll be completely honest with you. That guy came in from day one just hitting the ground running. Yeah. Uh, just an absolute athlete, uh, quote-unquote athlete. I mean, he runs like a baby giraffe, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'd say two and two through week four. And then we take a trip down to Houston. I think we could probably – hang with Houston I know they they're used to putting up points they lost a couple they lost their key defensemen so <laughs> to the Cardinals so that might be a little hefty on them we'll see how they, they fare in the first couple weeks so I'll say three and two through week five uh we'll beat the Cowboys at, at home on that October Sunday uh, uh, evening game so that'll put us at what at four and two yeah through week six week seven the Jets come back to us We'll win that game. It's a home game. We play very well with the home crowd behind us. For sure. So that puts us at five and two. Man, we're doing better than I thought we would. <laughs> L.A., uh, I know we hung with L.A. last year because we played them last year, too, and I think we actually came out on top in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's going to be here in L.A. It, it's going to be here in L.A. You got Justin Herbert, who's coming, coming up like we were talking about earlier. I'll give us a loss in that one just because – as much as I'm not a huge Charger fan, uh, I like the young guns coming up. And that's also a return home game for Hunter Henry, too. Not so, only that, but would you consider going to that game? They're going to be right here in our backyard. Uh, that one I am I am looking at. it. Oh, and it's on Halloween. Go figure. So, great Halloween. <laughs> there, there you go. Treat And treat thyself. So, we'll say five and three. We go to Carolina. That should be a win, in my that should, opinion. That should be a win. I'll give us a win. So we're we're at a uh, what am I six and three now, mm-hmm. and we're at home against Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh boy, they're coming up after all those rough years, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that this whole N. Keel Harry thing just goes away real quick, and we could pull OBJ to come in. To be quite honest with you, that would be a hell of a pickup for us. I I really like OBJ. And what uh, be surprised if Bill Belichick pulls that trigger either. He did it with Moss. He did it with uh, with Jesus. All all these guys coming in. Yeah. Um. I'll give us a win there, just because uh, Cleveland struggles. I, I'm I I like to see Cleveland win, but Cleveland does. They do have their struggles. And again, playing up in New England is not easy, true. especially in November. So. <laughs> true, true. Okay. So seven and three after ten games. All right. Um. We're at Atlanta. That should be a win. That should that be, yeah. So that puts us at eight and three. Then what? Then you guys come to town. 
Uh, humble and win, humble and defeat. If we win, right. awesome. If not, right. I don't. Uh, I'll give us a win there. I mean, I, I always look back, and I know you hate this this memory, but that that blowout that we had again, <laughs> fifty nine nothing with those AFL jerseys. Yeah, I can't. Jesus. I can't. I, can't forget that one. I'll give us a win there. So that puts us at nine and three. Where? Then we're at Buffalo. That's definitely a loss. That we, we ain't winning up in Buffalo. We yeah, and that's a, a Monday night game too. So on ESPN. So that'll be a that'll be a great game to watch. But I don't see us coming through against Buffalo. Buffalo is one another one of those young teams that took the division last year. Uh, coming up, uh, what's his face under center up there? I'm Josh drawing Allen. a play. Uh, Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh Allen. Yeah. Kids absolutely miraculous he put i hated playing against uh in fantasy against him last year because he was just destroying everybody 500 yards a game yep. five touchdowns to go along so That's i a definitely give us a loss there that puts us at nine and four through week 13 14s are uh our rest week yeah um then we go to indy that'll be an interesting game I'm still waiting for Andrew Luck to come out of retirement. I don't know if that's. A- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how I feel about Indy and and the Jags and, and Houston. So I get yeah. you. Yeah, um, can't stand Indy. I feel like Indy's a trap game. I feel like that we we could take a loss there. So we'll go nine and nine and six. No, what am I? Nine and five. Nine and five through the fourteen games played. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo. Comes to town in week 16. We can't beat Buffalo. Yeah. We can't beat Buffalo. Buffalo is too good. So we'll go nine and six. Is that right? Yeah. Nine and six. We'll beat Jacksonville. They Jacksonville's got to come up to us. So 10 six. And then you guys close. And out. then we go to Miami. Okay. So we're looking at a 10 and seven year because I'll give us the loss in the line. We never play well in Miami. Yeah, I have you guys eleven and six, so something very okay. similar. So, um, what what game did, did, was different? If you can remember that we had, if I could remember that you said that you guys would take a loss on, I think at one of the Miami games I gave you guys the win. So now that that's gonna be in Miami. Um, it's gonna be at the end of the year. I, I feel that the team is going to be very desperate to get out of new England, get out of those cold temperatures and going down to sunny South Florida. They're going to play with a chip on their shoulder. I feel like, um, Buffalo may be taking the East again. And, um, I think, gonna, what I'm thinking. I, I think whoever's going to win between new England and the dolphins, that's going to get the, the wild card spot. Okay. With the, with the loser being eliminated. So that's what I could- I'm thinking. I actually agree with that. I see Buffalo taking the division again. That's and when back to back. Yeah. I think that's obviously easier said than done, but I, I think that t- time's on their side right now. So, yeah. Speaking of time, I mean, we're just a couple <laughs> of weeks away from seeing preseason and, and it's, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, and, you and me both, my friend. Uh, let's see. We, we uh, open up preseason August 12th. Yeah. So it's a Thursday. So what is that? Uh, July. We're a month away, less than a month, a little less than a month away here. So just about three and a half weeks away. That's why we're pumping these out. And that's why I knew I had to bring you on here. So I <laughs> uh, really appreciate you taking the time talking about your Patriots. Again, congrats with everything that's going on with you. A recent engagement for this guy. So thank you. I um, appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, man. <laughs> so we will be touching base here soon. We got Dolphins and New England Patriots coming up here soon. So continue to watch all these podcasts that we got going on. Check out our next team. But Brandon Pesolano and his Patriots, and I'm Solomon, and we're signing out here, guys. Thank you. Tune in next time, all right? Thank Thank you. you, Solomon.